Hello and welcome to episode two of The Light Teaching Show, um, the show where we try to have a bit of fun with pedagogical research. This episode features Neve Mullen and Peter Matthews, who are both lecturers in English for academic purposes, as well as being Light Fellows. It also features Frank Feng, who is International Officer at Leeds University Students' Union, and myself. In this clip, uh, Peter and Neve explain the differences between stress-timed and syllable-timed languages and the uh, trouble that this can cause for international students arriving in the UK for the first We then have a quick demonstration of how this works and then quickly talk about how we might help international students uh, prepare for encountering these kind of problems when they arrive here in the UK. We recorded this a few months ago, so you'll notice that the flat and the amount of facial hair has changed but I have uh, managed to wear the same shirt uh, for at least a little bit of continuity. But that's it for the intro, I'm going to hand over to Peter. We're going to have a look at some of the features of fluently spoken English. Um, because English is a stress time language rather than a, a syllable time language. And I'll explain the difference between those two. A stress time language, the, the rhythm of the language is dictated by the stressed syllables. Okay. Um, which means that if it's not if it's not a stress syllable, it reduces in form. It's not formed fully uh, as we would spell it. Okay. Um, a syllable timed language means that each syllable uh, in a speech stream is a beat in the rhythm. Okay. So an example of a syllable timed language uh, is Spanish. Um, if you're speaking Spanish. You have to fully pronounce every syllable. The challenges that students face, or, or maybe people would disagree, but when they come is that um, English is a stress-timed language. We'll demonstrate this with a little game. So the rules for this game is I'm going to clap a beat, okay? And this beat is supposed to represent the stress beat when we speak in English. Go! You, you me, him, her. Three times. That's okay. easy, okay. right? So, so they, they would represent the stress syllables. Um, stress syllables tend to be on the more important content words. So they tend to be on the verbs and the nouns normally. Uh, obviously, this isn't grammatical. This is, this is something that just exists for this exercise. Should we go on to the next line? So yep. you, you and me and me and him, him and her. her. Um, if I just ask you in that and in green, um, what happens to that? Do we pronounce that and or do we pronounce it differently? You and me. <laughs> I feel like the, the the ending part of and you just kind of link with the right. Yeah. 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 I have, yeah. Yeah, I have language class for 10 weeks. Kind of <laughs> <laughs> so there's a, there's a couple of things happening there. So if you aren't familiar with this sound, uh, if you're if you aren't familiar with fluent speech, the word and would represent itself to you as it is written, yeah. And uh, and, and it's pronounced like that as it would be and written in a he and him and her, which we don't speak like. Yeah, uh, but what actually happens here uh, is uh, between the vowel sound of u u and a for and, we add a sound. We add a w, u one, u one. So that w sound isn't yeah. written, but it but it's in it's in the speech stream. So actually, that and doesn't sound much like and. Um, it's your familiarity with the pronunciation of and that allows you to recognise it. Um, so if you ha uh, haven't had the exposure that we all have had um, of English spoken quickly, you might not recognise that word. Frank, did you ever notice this? Because so if if we take that example, you and uh, me and uh, him, you and uh, I think many students learn those as really separate words. But then when you come here, you hear us say you and me and him and her. Did yeah. you ever notice that happening? I, I think I noticed like people usually like mix two 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 words into into one. Like if you speak, yeah. especially if you speak pretty quick, yeah. yeah. Like and uh, they usually like and. They just kind of think them together already. Yeah. My That's, students yeah. sometimes call this. They they say, "Oh, teacher, they're eating their words." They're <laughs> <No. laughs> like, <laughs> got a question for for Frank. So like, did them? Um, did, did had you been exposed to this kind of 
uh, English before you came to Leeds? I, I feel like even if I, so we have the English as compulsory module from your from your like primary school to your high school. So I learned for like over, over you can say over 10 years, but especially for the speaking and listening part, I feel like it's late until I go to the UK. You just feel like refresh. So, so it's, it's if you like the, the English you learn in China is pretty different from the, the reality, like the actual people speaking it, speaking as a first language happens. Yeah. We have the same, we have the same like conversations here about how we speak English, but are we teaching this ideal English or are we teaching actually how English is really spoken and used? I think teachers are learning more and more that you need to expose students to how English is really spoken so that they can understand it. Um, what's what's the upshot of this so so if we, if we recognize this this is a you know obviously yeah i don't know what the word is phenomena yeah <laughs> let's talk about you yeah. uh, we talk about um something that happens so how does the university help help students that, that are arriving and facing these kind of problems is it is it just about is it is it mainly about awareness or are there sort of like concrete things that people can do? There's both though, I think Peter can jump in here as well, but I think there's, from the perspective of us working at the university, like the tutors, I think we do need to be aware that sometimes when students aren't understanding us, it's not because their language is bad, it's because the language that they're suddenly being exposed to is um, completely different to the language that they learned. So we can be aware of that and be a bit more patient, obviously. I think a lot of people are extremely patient, but we can also do things in our speech to help the students. So slow down a little bit, explain words, ask, do you understand and be, be prepared to rephrase things. But also one of the things that Peter and I have been talking about a lot and we really think the university needs to do is recognize that there can be this mismatch in the, student, the English that students learn versus what they experience when they come here. And I think, to be honest, a sort of pre-arrival lecture series would be really helpful where students get a set number of lectures that they can uh, access before they come, maybe to develop their listening development, listening skills, but also build vocabulary in their subject also get used to different accents and people speaking at different speeds. Franks, what's your perspective on that? Even now, I have lots of uh, lots of students who just arriving Leeds. They they just feel like they really hope university can provide them more language support resources before they actually start their their journey to Leeds. So they want to prepare more. It's not like students they don't want to prepare. They are happy to do more preparation. They ask me whether any re reading list recommendation and like how can I practice my my listening because for. For lots of international students, especially they from if they are from Asia, like they don't have lots of chance to to speak English. They when they first arrive, it's usually they hear the sentence, but they don't have enough time to actually understand that. They need to trans translate into into Chinese bags by themselves. They can't just take English in and understand them directly. They have to translate them back to back to the to, to the Chinese. So it's the Chinese students, for example. So this is my this is my feeling, and sometimes. If people speak pretty fast, I can probably just catch some of the some of the sentence rather than rather than all of them. Yeah, so it's always helpful to to have more preparation for that. Thanks for watching the second episode of the Light Teaching Show. I know that as a new person to the ideas of stress and syllable timed languages, uh, that I certainly learned a lot from Neve and Pete. I also learned a lot from Franks and uh, talking about the experiences of coming from China to come and study in the UK and the differences between the languages there. I was really interested also to hear Neve's suggestion of a, a pre-lecture series for international students and the fact that Franks thought that international students might be on board with that. So, so that was really enlightening for me. Um, if you like this, um, I did a pilot, we did a pilot episode um, of the Light Teaching Show uh, back in the summer with Dan Trousdale talking about Lego series play and it will be available somewhere around here.